What do these people have in common? Heads of state, governors, captains and barons of industry. They are nation builders committed to evolving a better Nigeria. Towards a Greater Nigeria with Omotayo Omotosho MFR is the TV program that brings them all together. Don't miss it on NTA Network and NTA International every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. A change towards a Greater Nigeria. Incisive and enlightened. Change is here. Don't miss it. Good evening, Nigerians, and you're welcome to the first edition of Towards a Greater Nigeria in the new year, year 2016. I wish you a very, very happy and prosperous 2016. Tonight on Towards a Greater Nigeria, the focus is promoting made in Nigeria goods and services. For so long, Nigeria as a nation has been a consuming society rather than being a producing one. And you will agree with me that any country dependent on the whims and caprices of other nations has lost her independence. So we cannot continue to being a consuming nation. We must change. That is the word. We must change from being a consuming nation to a producing nation. The perceived austerity measure we are experiencing today creates an opportunity for the rebirth of our local industries and economy. What happened to the granite pyramids of the north, to the heights and skin industry, to our rubber plantation, cocoa plantation, textiles, automobiles, and so on and so forth? We will be looking at these issues and more tonight on Towards a Greater Nigeria, so don't go away. I remain your uncle on Motaya Motosho. So discuss those issues with me tonight. Uh, two gentlemen that do know their onions. To my immediate left is a very sound economist and a political analyst in person of Mr. Debo Adifolachi. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. And my far left is yet an entrepreneur somebody with good knowledge of the economy and of course a social commentator in person of Ezra Shokumi. Mr. Shokumi, you're welcome. Thank you, madam. Let me first go to Mr. Adifolaju, my very, very first question. With the onset of President Buhari's administration, he has shown to us that he is here for change, that we must change our ways and our value system. How would you assess his style of leadership so far? Providence has afforded Nigeria a man whose reputation preceded him. He's a firm manager of crisis. We are fortunate at this point in time when the country itself is adrift in more ways than one, to have somebody who can diagnose our problem. He stated, I'm going to loosely quote him, that if we do not kill corruption, corruption will kill Chaos. Nigeria. The yeah, president said so. Now, the first order of business is to deal with the most urgent uh, challenge we, we face, which is uh, everybody that has an opportunity should just cut away the commonwealth. Wealth belonging to everyone. He has focused in the immediacy on stopping the leakage 
in our commonwealth. Successfully, he's doing it. Uh, but the challenge does not stop there. The country by itself, our economy, is very resilient. Uh, we are most hopeful. We are highly blessed with human resources, all sorts of material resources. Natural resources. Natural, natural resources. Yeah. But our focus for the last 40 to 50 years have just been in sharing money. Revenue from oil. That's that one sector. That has been the focus, the main focus of the state called Nigeria, is how much do we get, how much do we share, and that's the beginning and the end of everything in Nigeria. We have failed to change, to focus on our pre-existing low-hanging fruits, which was agriculture. Before oil was part of the mix, there was agriculture. Yeah. We have totally abandoned agriculture, and our agro-allied businesses, businesses have been abandoned. Unless and until we give the president the support he needs, the encouragement he needs, even the suggestions that he needs, that let us go back to a better agro-business. We will not be able to salvage or resuscitate what we can salvage and resuscitate. Our problems are internal. Our solutions cannot be external. Our solutions are internal. Nigerians have a very bright future. Our best days are still ahead of us because we are heavily, highly blessed with all of these resources. So if we have the present president leading us and we are suggesting and we are complying and we are encouraging that which God has blessed us with and we have forgotten about we've forgotten about the pharmaceutical industry the cocoa industry the hides and skin industries when we go back to those with the present technology in place employment will be tied to it uh, state governments will now be able to focus on their comparative advantage, advantage or advantages when state governments are able to focus on their advantages, it will help develop their states. Develop their states. Internally generated revenue, revenue will show up. And we will stop being heavily dependent on sharing money strictly. As soon as we move away from just sharing money into creative existence, because our existence has not been created. As soon as we go into creative existence, it will be tied to employment, it will be tied to security, because when our youth are gainfully employed, when our youth are being paid livable wages, it will reduce the violence, it will reduce the, the crisis, disorder, the crisis insurgencies, that, insurgencies that we have. They will have hope, they will have something to live for, they will have plans, they will be making families, they will be growing families, planning for their children, because they will be earning livable wages from all of these other things that we are blessed with. If we don't focus on life, we still keep thinking about when the oil price will go up. In my own considered opinion, I pray that the oil price goes down even further, to $5 per barrel. So that we can look at non-oil exports. Because those who were before me, they said, necessity is the mother of invention. invention. Thank you. When we are compelled to look inward for solutions, the solutions already exist. We will find them. Thank you, Mr. Uh My next question will go to Mr. Shokumbi. As uh, an entrepreneur and a man uh, with good knowledge of the economy, um, looking at the antecedent of Mr. President and his style of leadership, would you say he's on the right path? How would you assess Mr. President's um, um, style of leadership since assumption of office? To date. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you, Madam. I think uh, in our sojourn as a nation, uh, God has given us a leader that is ready to take the bull by the horn. Having seen different challenges bedeviling our nation, and he, uh, uh, in other words, he says he's ready to redistribute wealth, wealth. across across board across board. So this tells us 
that this man is sincere to carry out the policy that he has. In other words, what he wants to do is he wants to what, what he wants to do is uh, having a policy redirection, not having things, not doing things the way they, they, you know it used to be. You know, in the past, they would say status quo remain the same, status quo remain the same. But the man wants to change the status quo. Status That's why the, the, the dictum is change, change, exactly. and change. Uh, exactly. And uh, if you look at if you look at it, it keeps emphasizing. If I during the uh, electionary campaign, I think uh, he he went to when he went to uh, Meduguri, when he saw the tiny youth, he was he was overwhelmed, and he said something that. If unemployment is not seriously tackled in Nigeria, that Nigeria might be sitting on a keg of gunpowder. Our youth must be yes. engaged. Our youth must be engaged. Positively. Positively. And if you look at un un unemployment, unemployment is uh, uh, people actively looking for work and they are unable to get. And if you look at the statistics today, according to the CBN, about 80% of Nigerian youth are unemployed. That is, yes, it is, that is about 66 billion Nigerian youths are without jobs. Majority of Nigerian youths yes. are unemployed. That's about 60, 66 million of them are without yeah. jobs. And now, Mr. President is saying that one of the areas to address unemployment in Nigeria is agriculture. Agriculture will give us food security, agriculture will give us uh, raw materials for our industries. Agriculture will give us foreign exchange earnings. I think what we are facing now, consider the fact that uh, you know the uh, oil, the price of uh, crude crude oil in the international market is going down. I think it's it's a blessing to us because it will give us the opportunity to look inwards, to look for solutions. It's not as if that we don't have uh, solutions to address our challenges. We have solutions, but it be also not now to sit down and face our challenges to provide, in order to provide the solutions to them. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shokubi. Um, Mr. Defolaju, uh, talking about finding solutions to uh, the various problems bedeviling us today, um, can you tell us your take on the derivation formula where we have the state government coming to Abuja after fact meeting to collect their own share of the oil revenue to develop their state when people are saying why can't they look inwards to see what benefits what are the uh, areas of strength within their state that can be explored what's your take on this i'm going to be funny my answer is going to be very funny share it with us every child has to be weaned off breastfeeding. Naturally. As a mother, I should yes. know that. Nigerian 36 states are still sucklings. They are still being breastfed. It is imperative for us to understand the genesis of our challenge. As soon as we moved away from budgets that was generated from what you have, what you are going to generate, what you're going to create, what you're likely to consume. And we move to allocation of resources based on artificial percentage. It took the creativity out of governance. Executive, pardon me, governors no longer have to think about their comparative state advantage or advantages they now think about which day are we collecting money and after they have collected because there was no thought put into what you need to do to generate the money there is also consequently no thought put into what you will do with the money when you receive it they, they, they tend to work hand in hand when you are thinking about how to generate something when you now receive it you will be thinking about what to do with what you have received in, a, in the case of Nigeria, as soon as we moved away from the low-hanging fruits, we went into a danger zone. We began to go downwards. 
because creativity, even our education is not tied to employment any longer. Without a father or a mother, you cannot have 20 people get employment based on their qualification and their ability to perform. If we cannot employ half of the people we graduate here, and they are very young, they, and they can see how you are living, you are driving all these fanciful cars, and they have no hope. To give for jobs for two, three years? There are no jobs for them to, to have, because everybody's father is not a permanent secretary. And it's not, not a minister. Or a minister. If we do not get away from strictly derivation, derivation formula, sharing of the national wealth for the purpose of cutting it away, not for the purpose of development. The first thing that needs to happen is that the sharing formula has to be rethought. Set that aside. Every state governor needs to come and tell Buhari what is their comparative advantage. In their state. In their state. And how much will they guesstimate that they will collect in their state to run their state? Thereby encouraging internal generated, generated revenue. revenue. IGR. The dessert is what you receive from federal government. That is a dessert. Yeah. Not the real meal. It's, it's not the main meal. What can you do for Tell yourself me. is the challenge we've had. We no longer think about what a state can do for themselves. For themselves. Mm. We now think about, don't worry about it. At the um, end of the at, quarter, at the end of the time. There is an amount that is coming from the federal. So our thinking is not tied to giving service to our citizenry. We don't even know how many people are in our states. We, are, we don't care. If we were thinking about generating from our state, you will know how many people are in your local government. So you will know what you need to provide in your local government. You will know what you need to provide in the city of that state. We don't know because we don't need to know. When the money comes, we share it. And those who are in, in the proximity of sharing the money, the money comes to them. Everybody else, have a good time. You don't get any. You are telling us how to prefer the solution. That they should be coming to Mr. President to tell Mr. President there are areas of competitive advantage. Comparative, comparative advantage. And some states have comparative advantages. Yeah, more than one. More than one. <clears throat> there are some states, specifically, I will take a number. Okay. They are already assembling and manufacturing cars called Innocent. They are supposed to come with their governor and the MD of Innocent to Mr. President. We are assembling and manufacturing in Anambra. We have this particular challenge, power. Right in Anambra, I may be wrong, and I may be right, there's a proximity to Anambra is Enugu. They have a coal industry that is dead. We need to revive this coal, coal industry. industry to power this car automobile. manufacturing, this automobile industry. industry. We have gas, we need to link it to this industry. Mr. President, what you can do for us is to order all the fleets that Nigeria is going to be using from this company. We know we will not be able to meet the order, so we will have to expand. Where do we expand to? We will have to expand to another geopolitical zone, zone. within Nigeria. Within Nigeria. Tell me more. For example, the National Assembly have allocated on two occasions, I may be right and I may be wrong. Two occasions they've allocated monies for themselves to buy vehicles. Whether it is Nara, but it's going to be American specification. In, the, in this present challenge that we are having, we should not be talking to ourselves like that. What is American specification when we're in Nigeria? The American government does not order Maybach, which is a Mercedes product. American government orders from Ford, Chrysler, Fiat Chrysler, and General Motors. All in America. All in America. If you want to drive Maybach, that's your personal thing. You are allowed to drive your Mercedes Benz and drive any other car you like. But not official cars. Not official cars. So our official cars from now on in Nigeria, let's patronize Innocent. Let's patronize Innocent. And by the way, I'm Yoruba, I'm not Igbo. <laughs> so you're not advocating for your 
<laughs> There's no tribal issue here. No, it's, it's, it's a Nigerian issue. Yes. Because if we develop innocent, in my mind, I'm thinking we need to develop transportation railways. To build the coaches, innocent will have to build another plant to build those coaches that will be running railways. And Innocent will get more empowered. Mm -hmm. Innocent will employ more people. Innocent will build houses for their staffs. Innocent will have urgent care or hospitals for their staff. Innocent staffs will be driving Innocent cars at discounted rates. The key thing is employment and foreign exchange. It will be kept in Nigeria. So and the Ajakuta will be working. I was about to say now what? Ajakuta still. Then there's, the, then there's the Aja and then there's Ajakuta. All of these industries will wake up because they are allied industries. And we, we start to develop an automobile industry. Iron and steel industry will wake up. Boys and girls are working. They're earning livable wages. They have their own homes. They have their own cars. Crime will go down. We don't need more guns. We need more jobs. Yes. Very true. Thank you, Mr. Defolaju. Um, Shokubi Ezra, your take on this? Well, he, he has said much, but uh, at the same time... From your own perspective? Yeah, from, my own, from my own perspective. I, in terms of uh, comparative uh, advantages, uh, states, I want to believe that there is no state in Nigeria that cannot be self-sufficient. Really? There is no state in Nigeria that cannot be self-sufficient. Uh, Most states say they don't have oil. It, 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 does, it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean... They cannot be self-sufficient. Yes, they cannot be sufficient. In fact, we should de-emphasize oil. Yeah, and let's look at... We should de-emphasize de oil. Let us look at what states can do. Let us look at what state can generate, what state can produce, and uh, you know, government can now complement the efforts of the, the states. Eff the effort of the states. Um, uh, take for instance, a particular state in Southwest. Formerly, they were generating uh, less than five hundred million, but at the moment, they are generating about uh, six billion a month. Now they started looking yes, inwards. They started looking inwards, and now they are looking at cassava cultivation. You know, in cassava, because cassava cultivation, there are lots that you can you can derive from it. You can get at all. I guess I know the state you're talking about. Why would you want to talk about it? He's done well, so let's yes. give him the kudos. Okay. I'm sure you're talking about Vogue State. Exactly, madam. <laughs> uh, you can get uh, ethanol from cassava. You can get uh, cassava uh, chippings. You can get a lot of uh, product from cassava. But uh, the state government has started you know, looking into that. If it's able to do that, it will also complement uh, you know, the activity of, state of the government in generating revenue, revenue. in the area of uh, poultry production. And yet they don't have oil. Exactly. Yeah. In, the area of, uh, in the area of uh, poultry production. Yes. Ogun state, Ogun state, for instance. Ogun State is like... Uh, uh, Michigan to New York, you know. Ogun, in America. Yes, Ogun State is contiguous to Lagos State. Yes. Ogun State can take the advantage of the population in Lagos by going into poultry production. When I was carrying out a research some, some years back, yeah. looking at, uh, you know, the poultry being brought from the Benin Republic into Nigeria, Nigeria, I discovered that about some of the products that were brought into, uh, into Nigeria was from Russia. Not even France. Mm. Okay. So originally from Russia. Yeah. No, it, Republic of Benin. Yeah, yeah, true. Republic of Benin. I just, I said, uh, can't state government look into it? Because if state government is able to do that, it's going to create employment for its, uh, for its uh, youth, you know, and uh, so on and so forth. And so increase the revenue that comes into the state. Exactly. Our quickest way of uh, getting employment for those able-bodied persons, especially these, we identified as agriculture and mining. Uh, we have vast potential, to, as you just mentioned, in agriculture. Um, and in the quickest, uh, apparently, you know, to absorb able-bodied uh, unemployed persons. 
You're welcome back for those that are just uh, joining us. Uh, we've been looking at uh, issues relating to the economy, the leadership style of Mr. President, what we need to do to promote made in Nigeria goods and services, because if we don't, nobody will do that for us. As Nigerians, we owe that to ourselves. Well, this is where we'll call it a day because I've just been prompted that our time is up. But I promise you that we'll bring a continuation of this expose next week. So remember to join us. I should say a big thank you to our guest tonight. Good night.